Going out into the forest to acquire food for the day is one of my favorite activities to do with my Yanomami family. When I leave the Shabano and venture out into the surrounding jungle, the canopy gives me reprieve from the scorching hot sun and the biting gnats. Since we travel in small groups, it's a great way to spend time with the family. I say that jokingly because the whole entire village is my family. But when we break out into smaller groups, uh, it gives me an opportunity to spend just a little bit more quality time with my mom without all the distractions and interruptions. Sometimes these excursions last a few hours, sometimes they can take up the whole day. But our goals seem rather simple. Just find food so we don't go hungry. But even though it's a simple goal, it's, it's, it, there's always adventure. There's always, there's something always comes up. There's never a dull moment. And when we walk through the forest, you know, we could, we could pick mushrooms. Uh, we could go fishing. We could forage for edaveshi fruit. Um, you know, we might even find some snakes to kill. So, uh, you know, going out with my family is so much fun. But for a newbie like me, in the beginning, it was, it was difficult to prepare and plan for these, for these little excursions. I'd, uh, I'd have to figure out, you know, do I, do I prepare a day pack? You know, what clothes do I wear? Should I bring a camera? Should I bring a tripod? Do I have my notebook? Um, do I have a pen? Do I have a backup for my pen? Do I have a backup for my backup? I'm always concerned about being overburdened with extra weight. But I am just as concerned of not being able to take a once in a lifetime photo because I, my batteries ran out or, or I wasn't able to jot down a note because my pen broke. As for my mom and basically the rest of the Yanomami, they're, they're up and out in minutes. All they need is a wad of tobacco, uh, maybe a plantain uh, and a machete and a basket. And that's pretty much it and they're good to go. So this, this sort of cross-cultural difference between me and mom and how to start our day was one of the first conflicts that we had in the very beginning. I'll never forget when one morning back in 2013, uh, mom had, had, she had shaken my hammock and said, he said, you know, it's time to wake up, time to wake up. And, you know, I was, I moaned and groaned and, and, and I just slowly crawled out and I didn't, I didn't really want to get out of my hammock. And, and during those early times, um, it was, it was hard for me to adjust to, to being in the middle of the Amazon, sleeping in a hammock outdoors, uh, all the bugs, the sweltering heat, trying to 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 adjust to the climate, and and one of the big things was the was that throughout the night there are so many jungle noises and strange noises that I I've, I've never heard in my life, and and when you're in a in, in a totally new environment, you just don't know what these noises are. And I remember the very first day that I slept in Yanomami Village. I uh, I had a flashlight and and I had a knife and I was I was frightened and every uh, every 20 minutes or so I heard some kind of screech or some kind of howl or some kind of movement in the trees and I'd perk up and I'd wake up turn on my flashlight and I'd say what's that who's there and I I crawled out of my hammock and I would scan the village perimeter and I noticed that everyone was sound asleep I'm like no way there's no way that everyone is just asleep and and slept through that screech of some kind of animal I heard in in the not too far you know not too far off in the jungle but um I just figured if 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 they felt safe and okay, then I should be. Then I should feel safe and okay. But nevertheless, you know, the first times, a uh, first time a suburbanite like me was sleeping in the middle of the Amazon jungle was, was was frightening. Of course, over the years, those sounds, those very same sounds, were actually are very soothing to me. They actually help me now fall asleep, and they and they help me stay asleep throughout the day. Another thing is that in the mornings, the jungle is so cold. So it was difficult for me to get out of my cozy cocoon in my hammock. But when mom says it's time to get up, it's time to get up. Like a sloth, I climbed out of my hammock and, and, and kind of uh, ambled over to the fire to, to warm myself up. And then, uh, and then I, got, I got a pot of water going so I can make some coffee and a little bit of oatmeal. And then as I was sipping on my cup of joe, I, I grabbed out my field notebook to, to review some of the notes from the night before and uh, kind of shuffled to my, to my backpack and just took inventory of my equipment, making sure everything's okay. And then I glanced up and I saw mom just glaring at me and she had this face that was a mixture of what in the world are you doing? And I know you're, you're my son and I'm your mother and this is your first time in the jungle so I just have to be patient. And a mixture of, boy, if you don't get your butt ready in the next minute, I am going to slap you with the broadside of this machete. I got the hint 
pretty quickly. And when I looked around, I noticed that like the quarter of the village was just waiting on me. And I felt, I felt so bad. They probably wanted to start like an hour ago. And here they were just like watching me eat oatmeal. So I, I hastily geared up and, and I, I, you know, got my pack ready and, and tried to make sure I had everything I needed. And then I put my clothes on and, and I put my, I put my shoes on and, and mom said, at the high prado, at the high prado, hamo, hamo means, you know, hurry, hurry, you get, get going, get going. And, and then, uh, she, she pointed at the shoes and said, shami, shami, ahoyota, ahoyota. You know, she was telling me, uh, the shoes are bad. You just, just, you know, throw them away. You don't need them. And I thought about it for a quick second, walking through the jungle barefoot, but mom didn't realize that I, I grew up wearing, wearing socks and shoes, which pretty much rendered my feet very vulnerable to the elements of the Amazon jungle. And, you know, compared to my mom, you know, she, she has, she, her soles of her feet are like rocks. So uh, I think she, she noticed that, you know, that shoes were bad because they were making my feet weak. So I sheepishly smiled and I said, ma, ma, waiha, waiha. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 wait, wait. And, uh, um, and then she, then mom, mom just bellowed and started laughing and laughing. And she made me laugh. And then the whole village started laughing. So, uh, everyone was cracking up over my, over my particular handicap. So I'm glad, I'm glad we found some comic relief and all of that. Once we were out in the forest, I was a, I was a chain and ball. I mean, uh, I moved very slowly and clumsily, and one of the reasons is I, I had so much gear on me and so much stuff, I was weighed down. And two, just about everything fascinated me. I mean, every leaf, insect, flower, uh, fish, just just all of it was just so so amazing. And I just wanted to stop and study and look at it and take a picture. And I'd say, what he got the, what he got the, and that means, what is that? What is that? And my relatives took turns telling me in Yanomami what these things were. And, um, and I would repeat after them and, and they, they found it hilarious, you know, probably with my, my terrible accent. I had a system where I would try to mimic the sounds of my, you know, newfound vocabulary. So, uh, and I think, and I'm pretty sure it worked for me. You know, for example, I would say uh, if I wanted to, to practice uh, the word bat for Yanomami, it's, you know, it's, which is hewa, hewa. So I would go, hewa. And when I wanted to practice the word thunder, which is yaru, I go, yaru, yaru. And this... This was prime time comedy hour for the Yanomami. I entertained the whole village for, for sometimes hours as I just practiced words and tried to mimic the sounds of them. And uh, from, from, from the young children all the way up to the elders, they all got a kick out of me uh, trying to mimic the sounds. Those kinds of moments, they, I cherish them forever. And, uh, they're one of my favorite memories in the jungle with my, with my family. And, and even though uh, at, in one perspective, I'm sort of like this researcher trying to, to study them and trying to learn their language, but at the same time, they're my very own blood and they're my very own kin. So it just made my, my experience so special. Someday I'll make a more comprehensive video of all the things we forage for in the jungle, but let me share a few clips and videos with you now. Here's a shot of mom just walking through the forest like a champion. <laughs> and she's wow. telling me you know, we have to go over there, it's not far. Here's a picture of me and mom and some family just kind of hanging out through the forest and you can see you can see my shoe. Everyone else is, you know, half naked and barefoot and you know I'm I'm wearing my shoes over here. Here's a clip of mom crabbing. Uh so she's digging her her hand and arm underneath these large rocks to kind of feel for the crabs and sometimes they can pinch you but uh you know they're, they're pretty skilled at it so they're able to you know grab it rather quickly and 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 tie up the crabs and uh and so this is what the women do quite a bit and, it, and it's such a great time because the weather the, the air is really cool along these creeks and you have the you know the shelter of the jungle canopy and it's such a good time uh hanging out with my with my family and and uh, you can see she's, she must have, you know, felt it or know there's, there's one there. So she's digging in really, 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 or she's very persistent here. Um, but I think this is cool, you know, how she's, she's um, getting crabs in the freshwater creeks and, and she's, um, you know, holding this, this almost newborn child here. And I slapped her arm because, uh, you know, so they're still uh, biting gnats and mosquitoes out here. So I was just kind of trying to give her a hand. <laughs> and then there she's, you know, mom thinks... Mom probably thinks this is all funny. You know, I'm sitting there with the camera trying to record her. Uh, but this is great. Uh, such a fun time.
and there she is there she got it yeah um so you can see how she's going to oh look little little baby crabs i guess um it would be interesting if someone could tell me the species of these crabs that'd be great um the focus is a little off but uh this is how she was able to get her crabs there we go and then she i guess squeezes the part of the shell there either to kill it or incapacitate it here's a photo of, of one of my um it's either my cousins or aunts i'm not entirely sure but you know uh, they spotted these mushrooms and and uh, they, you can sometimes when you're walking through the forest after we're fishing or foraging for something and you see these mushrooms and and, and they all stop and, and definitely gather them and um here's a close-up of them i don't know the species so if any um you know mycologists are out there could help me out you know pinpoint the species of these mushrooms that would be great but uh all i could say boy are they delicious we 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 cook these along with some frogs and the, those frogs and mushrooms oh that it was so 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 yummy and uh, i like this shot here because it's uh you know kind of shows the the this sort of how thick the jungle is with all the vines and the trees and the uh, and the branches and, and it's not easy it wasn't easy for me to travel or trek through uh, you know this type of environment because you know I had so much equipment and accessories and I was always getting snagged on vines and and, and overhanging branches and the Yanomami you know the women they, they are they, they just walk through like it's just a stroll in a, in a park and it's really cool watching them uh, and they're, this is truly their element. They, they are truly masters of the rainforest. Uh -uh. Love watching, watching mom, you know, uh, wield that machete and she's and she's so so strong and, and, and has so much precision in each whack and and I thought that was really really neat and um, that machete I brought down from the states and has a pretty good hacking hacking power so she was really happy to, to use that So you can see from 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 that footage that you know, that uh, that the way the way mom glides through the forest, the way she wields that machete and hacks down trees with extreme precision, uh, the way my family can spot mushrooms from meters and meters away, um, uh, the way the way mom can 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 go crabbing while holding an infant child, uh, while, and and being half naked in the forest. To me, that that's impressive, and, and that's resilient, and that's that's strong, and that's that's jungle tough. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out for a bit and listening to my story. And I look forward to the next one. Take care. Bye.